claim uh, negligible loss in performance by referring to remote files uh, compared with referring to local files. But they have a tremendous thing going for them. Right, the whole thing is based upon a version of Unix where local files are so incredibly inefficient uh, right. that you can indeed do remote communication mm. hardly notice the overall yeah. performance. We have a little problem here, which is you're even more aggressive than he is. <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> allowing him to... Uh, <laughs> only, I'm trying to get information. I know. Uh, are you on? Are we on? Uh, I, John! I, I believe understand. all this. I understand they're totally messing up your wonderful Rios. Not only are they running Unix on it, but now they're trying to put in multi-programming, multi-processing. Is this true? Yes, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think Unix is all that bad. I think it's uh, unfortunate it's like standards. Standards are always uh, a lot worse than you can do. Yes. Usually a right. lot worse right. than you can do. Right. I mean, in it's, other words... Uh, well, I think, actually, the field is a little premature for standards. Uh, well, I mean, in other words, consider reactors. I mean, Freeman Dyson thinks that it's terrible to build standard reactors, and yet I think you can make them safer by making them the same. So they, uh, on the other hand, he claims that uh, they ought to be able to design new type of reactors where, in principle, they'll be a lot safer. But, John, that's an argument by, for not making progress in computers. We could make reliable old clunkers. Uh, well, uh, the same thing. Same thing, right? But they that's aren't going to... If they blow up, they don't hurt a lot of people. Well, that may not be true. There are a lot of computers getting into operations where they may have the opportunity to hurt right. a lot of well, people. that's true. So, uh, that may not be completely clear. Well, uh, I don't know. I feel that uh, consider security. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut, I think. <laughs> okay. so, go, I want a technical topic, something that he knows that you don't. I don't know of any, any such thing. <laughs> I don't know that okay. any, any, anything I, like I that exists. Uh, on your, the, you were talking about the changes in the system and why you couldn't run on your system why you couldn't work on his machine. Right. Okay. Why don't, I mean, is it true that he It isn't that he can't, he just doesn't want to. No, no, right. no, no, no. They are, for that they, reason, he okay. won't, right? Okay, G give me that argument. Well, I just thought, I think I'm going to lose that one. Yeah, I don't want to have that. He has a <laughs> privilege <laughs> to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want him any different. <laughs> the trouble with your great big system now is everybody's going to be using it, John. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> and, that, and it's going to get even bigger and more complicated and more impossible to change and more impossible to control than ever. Uh, so it really makes it just an impossible base for somebody who wants to do research and operating systems, which is awfully sad. It's just too Well, you, 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 you're being very optimistic that we have a, that many people using it and changing it and so forth. I feel it would well, be good. Well, look, I mean, what we've got an operating system now, which is up to eight megabytes resident, just about, especially when you throw in yeah. the paging system at Al Chang Road, right? Yeah. Eight megabytes, that's trivial. Yeah, well, there we are, but it's not trivial when you want to rewrite it overnight. It really becomes, makes it a slightly harder problem, right? So, so if you have to restructure because you decided mm. the entropy is just getting too great, it's getting too complicated, mm. you can't control it, it takes a little bit too long. Of Stalin the higher level language, you see. <laughs> well, the code generator is lousy the problem, enough. Yeah. The code generator is lousy enough. You don't have to write all that co much code to get eight megabytes of machine language. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you had a wonderful compiler. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> I think you have a pretty good compiler. Well, it's too bad that uh, it's too bad you didn't put a 370 emulator in. <laughs> then we can run all the bad old software as well as the really yeah, good stuff. Oh, yeah, that's true. I wish we did have a 370 emulator. Seriously? Yeah. Actually, only a little bit faster than 370 would have suited me. Just so that you could run? I'm only kidding. Oh. <laughs> Just for competitive reasons that we run faster than 370 on 370 uh -huh. code. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Yeah. We need a new stimulus here, Mary. Right. Okay. <laughs> 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 Let's see, what will you find about? Well, how about <clears throat> what were they talking about before? Right. Into how it, about yeah. automatic optimization will never equal good hand coding? Oh, what? Automatic optimization will never equal good hand coding. 
Well, yeah, I've been playing. I've been playing with this. I've been playing with a C compiler. I was telling you mm. about, and it, we we will we will leave it nameless for the moment. Right. But every now and again, something goes wrong, and it gets into um, an indefinite loop, right? right? And I trace these loops with my powerful debugging resources, right. and I find there are three hundred instruction loops that it's got into, and I wonder. How on earth anybody can write... Well, as long as it's infinite, it doesn't matter whether it's divided into parts from link 300 or whatever numbers. Well, but, but if you'd like to avoid it getting into it, you have to understand. <laughs> but then I realized that this is just like the kind of three instruction loop that I write, which is buggy. It's just that they have a hundred instructions per, per instruction in their, in their uh, code. So that, no, this isn't this. We need something more, something, something with, with really, really riles John, right? In actual fact, the Fortran compiler is generating quite good code. Well, that's going through Citrondo's the... Citrondo is the same compiler. Same compiler, right? Right. And, uh, but why is it that C is bad? The C is bad because no, the people compiler. who wrote the front end. Well, I think the one I'm talking about is a different compiler. Oh, maybe. Anyway, I saw some lovely examples of code generated, right? Mm -hmm. But my favorite example is that there's a load register 3, comma 4. And the very next instruction is a load register 3, comma 4. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this may not have a dramatic impact on performance, <laughs> but I think it's a beautiful example. Right, well, uh, let, me, let me just say, uh, in, uh, in uh, Fortran uh, 1, as a, what I used to like is these great examples of Store index, store index, store index, load index, load index, load index, store index, store index, store index. Yeah, right. As a sort of a move instruction. Do you ever recall that code? No, it I It should have showed up in the 7090. You should have seen it in the 7090. Well, I never played. In fact, that was the only place I've ever played with Fortran was the 7090. But I, I never looked at it in any detail. I see. In those days, you, d you didn't, you were so horrified at the thought of a higher level language no, that no, you my, never even no. looked at the code. No, my first experience with computers was actually Titan AutoCAD, which was a, which was a somewhat higher level than Fortran, mm -hmm. uh, written at Cambridge University. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a nice, uh, re reasonably succinct syntax for doing certainly mm -hmm. um, numerical calculations.